What's up and welcome. What's up and welcome. Hello and welcome. My name is Eileen. I'm a nationally certified Pilates instructor and NCPT. I'm here to share with you how to become a Pilates instructor. Chances are, if you're clicking on this video or if you're watching this video, it's because you're interested in becoming a Pilates instructor. And I'm here to help guide you through the process. Simple as possible. I'm not going to make this video super, super long. Get to the gist of everything and provide you with as much information as possible in the simplest way. So I would say first and foremost, if you're looking to become a Pilates instructor, chances are you already are practicing Pilates. So that's great. Step number one done. Whatever studio you're practicing Pilates in, I would recommend that you reach out to them. You can find out if they offer a teacher training program. That would be like my first and foremost recommendation. You already have a studio that you call home that you feel comfortable going into. Obviously, love the instructor that you're taking classes from. So that would be probably your best bet just to start off with. If you don't have a studio that you really call home and you kind of just like class pass or just hop around to different studios, and I'll talk a little more in depth in this video on researching the proper program for you. So I would say how to choose a program depends on a lot of different things. Most programs to get comprehensively trained, which basically means you're getting trained in all the different Pilates equipment, including mat, is about a 450 plus hour training. Trainings can be 500 hours, some can be 600 hours. That all depends on the program that you choose. My program was over 450 hours and I did start with the mat program first before I dove into getting comprehensively trained in reformer, Cadillac, the ladder barrel, chair. I did start with the mat program first. So it was throughout the pandemic. I did everything virtually from home. All you really need is your mat. And it's great because you can kind of sign up for a mat teacher training program without making the full commitment of the full comprehensive training. So it's a great way of kind of dipping your toes into the water and getting started. I would definitely recommend that. It's what I did. It's also a great way of just learning the method. You learn the classical exercises of the mat Pilates sequence. You learn the history of Pilates, principles of Pilates. Just a great way of you figuring out if it's something that you want to do. So when I started my mat training, I believe is only 20 or 30 hours of the full comprehensive training. So let's say you do your mat Pilates training at a studio and from there you want to go to another studio to do the full comprehensive training. Once you have your mat hours, most of the time they'll be applicable for whichever full training you decided to pursue in the future. So I would say start with the mat and then once you've decided that you want to get the full comprehensive training, you have your mat hours done, knocked off, done and dusted. What's great is first you can already start teaching mat. So whether that's teaching your friends and family just start to get experience. I would absolutely recommend um, the moment you begin whichever program you start, start getting experience teaching. It was something that I did from the beginning. I would teach on my sister, friends, virtually my boyfriend. I would just, it was a fly, sorry about that. I would just learn how to cue, learn um, to get comfortable teaching. The best way to teach, honestly, is to do it first. Really, really apply yourself in the exercises. Do them over and over and over again. Once you feel what your body should be feeling, it makes it, honestly, like 10 times easier to teach because you know what you should be feeling when you're doing the exercises. And then from there, you can start making it your own and providing the cues that are like relevant to who you're teaching to. So once you've done the MAP program, I would recommend figuring out if you want to get contemporary training or classical training. There's no right or wrong. I will say that if you decide to do contemporary training, which basically means like a more modern version of the Pilates method, there are bridge programs that you can do further down the line that kind of bridge the gap between contemporary and classical. Let's say you decide to do a contemporary program and a year from now you realize, oh no, like I wish I would have learned the classical method. That's not a problem. There are programs that you can dive into for that. I won't really talk too much about that, but I did want to go ahead and mention that. Once you decide the type of program you want to do, I would say, let's say going back to if you don't have like a home studio that doesn't offer a teacher training, there are so many programs out there and you can start to do your research. It may feel overwhelming when you start to do your research because there's so much information out there. If you're like an organized freak like me, you can make like a little spreadsheet, but the cost of the program, the length of the program, the weekends that you're going to be 
in the studio. There are like really, really big ones like Balanced Body, Peak, Stott. I don't know if that's how you say it or Stott. I don't know. There are a lot of bigger programs that are nationally known like Polestar as well. You can look into those. I think that those are great. They can be a little pricier just because of like how popular they are, I would say. But honestly, when you have a studio in your city that you're already going to, if they offer a teacher training program, it can be more personalized. Definitely find out like the amount of students in the program, the weekends that you'll be on site like learning. Nowadays, you can do everything virtual. So if you wanted to do a program that's hosted in LA, for example, now are looking into like host sites where the program that you choose will find a studio in your city so you can do the training within there. I don't know if that makes sense at all, but if you have any questions on that, please ask me because I feel like that I just went on a ramble. Anyways, so about the program itself, I would say that you have basically a structure of everything you'll be learning will be from like mat, reformer, Cadillac, chair, ladder barrel, and then special populations, injuries, all of that. Within mat, you learn all of the mat exercises. Within reformer, for example, you'll have the level one exercises, level two, level three, and that applies across the board. So for all the different pieces of equipment, you'll have different levels of the exercises. You basically learn everything about the exercise of like the spring tension, any progressions and modifications, muscles that you're activating, the purpose of the exercise, it's super important, all that fun stuff. That's a little bit about the program itself. Within each program, every program is different, but within those, like let's say 450 hours, you're gonna have different sections. From those 450 hours, a chunk of that is going to go towards observing. So you're just watching other instructors, whether that's in person or virtually, it's a mix of privates in group class settings. A chunk of that is going to go to to teaching practice hours, so time you spend practicing teaching. Another chunk is going to be like apprentice hours, so time you spend teaching under uh, observation from a certified Pilates instructor. A chunk of that is going to go towards learning the exercises themselves and like the modules of the different levels and exercises. I'm sure there's something I'm missing. It's um, observation, teaching, apprentice, actual weekends that you spend learning in the studio that obviously counts towards your hours. Let's say you already like, okay, I wanna do this. I am ready to become a Pilates instructor. You find the program that you want. You register for the program, you're ready to go. And you already start thinking into the future. Like, okay, once I get my certification, like where can I work? A lot of the times, and I won't say always, but like, if you get a training in a studio in your city that you build a relationship with, they may hire you after your program or even towards the end of your program, which is what happened to me towards the end of my teacher training program. I was hired, so it was great because all of the hours that were being put into the program applied both for work plus the program. So it's like killing two birds with one stone in that sense. That's also a benefit of choosing a local studio that you already are taking classes at and have built a relationship with. I can't say this will always be the case, but you know, there is a possibility. If not, you know, you can always, once you have your certification and once you've completed your hours, you probably won't have a hard time finding a job. Once you have completed your hours, you can sit for the NCPT, which is the Nationally Certified Pilates Teacher Certification. I took my NCPT exam very, very shortly after finishing the program. I wanted everything fresh in my mind. I felt that it was the best approach. Some people wait a couple months, some people wanna study more. I purchased like the official study guide booklet and all of that. And I can make another video talking about the NCPT exam if anyone's watching this and if you want to know more about how I studied for it and prepped and how I passed on my first attempt, I'd be happy to do that. But this video is just mainly about how to become a Pilates instructor. So to summarize the video, first off, do your research and choose a program that's best for you and really be thoughtful about the program that you choose where you're going to be spending a lot of time Decide if you want to start with the mat portion first and then kind of segue into the full comprehensive training. That is a decision you can make right off the bat as well. And then and then get ready for your program. The steps are pretty simple. I would say that if you have any questions at all in terms of figuring out what program is right for you, you can ask me. I'm happy to answer any questions you have about it. You can also ask your local studios, ask the owners. Most of the times everyone is more than willing to help guide you and ask a lot of questions. It's not gonna be a 
cheap investment. It is something that you can earn that money back. Not a cheap investment, but it is worth it if it's something that you're passionate about. I would say the typical cost of a program can range anywhere between like $3,000 to like $7,000. So choose a program that's, you know, also in your price range. I'll talk a little bit more about the bridge program. I was not classically trained. Like I said, there's no right or wrong. It's something that the more that I practice Pilates just for my own personal practice, the more I realize I absolutely love classical Pilates. So that's something that I might be exploring in my future is doing a bridge program. It'll bridge that gap between the program that I did and learning the classical method. To do a bridge program, you need to be already fully trained. So you can't just say, oh, I want to do a bridge program right off the bat. If that's the case, then you'll just go straight into a classical training. If you have any questions on once you are going through your program, what it's like being a Pilates teacher. I did go from leaving a corporate job to becoming a Pilates instructor. If this is something that, if you're watching this and you're living the corporate world or you have a full-time job and this is something that they're gonna be doing on the side or anything of that sorts, um, I lost my train of thought, but I think that about sums up the video. I've seen a video soon on what it's like becoming a Pilates teacher. So my dog is going crazy at a lizard right now and I just have to show you. What are you doing over there? Huh? Okay, anyways. I hope that this video helps answer some of your question on how to become a Pilates instructor. I will be uploading soon another video on what it's like to actually become a Pilates instructor. So stay tuned for that. If you have any questions that you want answered in that video, feel free to drop them in the comments here and I will absolutely address them in the next video. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you didn't already subscribe and like this video, I hope you do. That's about it. That about sums it up. So. I will see you next time.